Let's up call gang. We'll come back to some mechanics and materials. So let's go ahead and work on this problem. So we're going to do seven one. So we're given this cross sectional area of a beam. And we're given that we're applying a shear stress or a shear force of twenty kilonewtons, right? So it's just being pushed downward here. And we want to find the shear stress at point A, right? So this point A lies on this vertical part on the web, and it's at this place where it's converting to the bigger beam. So to do that, we're going to be using our shear stress equation, and what that is is VQ over IT. So we need to basically figure out what all of these are so we can plug them into the equation and figure out what shear stress is. So first of all, V is shear force, and we know what that is, 20 kilonewtons. And then we have Q. So what is Q? Well, Q is the equation is YR prime times area. And so what we do here is we're going to take our center. And so first of all, let's find out where our center of mass is. So this shape is symmetrical, so it's going to be pretty easy to tell that our y bar is going to cut it right in half. You can leave about y bar is equal to, right, 20 plus half of 300 is going to be 170. All right, so what is y bar? Well, y bar is the distance to the center of max of the shape that we're taking. So what we're going to do is we're going to find the point of A. So we're going to draw the line bay, perhaps. And so let's just imagine. There goes my paper. All right, we're taking a line here. Y bar is going to be the center of mass of everything above here. So we're looking at this shape. And this is the only shape we're interested in now. Good paper. So what is Y bar? Well, Y bar is going to be the distance from here to the center of mass, which is going to be half of this right tangle, right? So this is Y bar prime. So of course, what's it going to be? Well, this rectangle here, half of it is 150 millimeters. So we're going to go up to half of that. And then to get the half, the center of mass of this is going to be half of 20. So it's going to be 160 millimeters. And so let's convert that to meters, first of all. All right, 0 0.16 meters. And then what's area? So we're looking into area of this rectangle. So the base of it is 20 or 200 millimeters. Uh, 200 millimeters, and then 0 0.02 meters for the height. And so you solve for Q here. Paper's upside down. Right time on the wrong side, wrong, it's all mixed up. I didn't even do it, so it's going to be 6.4 times 10 to the negative fourth meters cubed. That's the end. So we have Q now, so let's find what else it, we have. We have I D on the bottom. So I is the moment of inertia, so let's go ahead and solve for the moment of inertia. Right? So we're going to use parallel axis theorem. And so there's a couple ways we could do it. We could split it up into three shapes and find the moment of inertia of each one of those. But the easiest way we could do it is we want something that lies on the center of mass. So that let's take this whole rectangle, right? Let's take the whole 200 by 340 millimeter big rectangle. And then let's subtract the moment of inertia of these two rectangles. And what that does is it lies everything on the center of mass. So we don't actually have to do anything with the area and distance in the Y. So the big rectangle has a base of 200 millimeters, it's 200, and a height of 340 millimeters. And we have to cube the height, because rectangle is the moment of inertia we cube the height. Then we're going to subtract it from those two. So the base of this rectangle here is going to be 200 minus 20. So we're going to subtract 180, right, because that's the new base. And then the height is going to be 300. So you do this. Uh, I is equal to 250 times 10 to the 6th millimeters to the 4th. But we want to convert to meters, so we're going to convert this to meters by multiplying by 10 to the negative 12th. Negative that's equal to 2.50 10 to the negative 4th meters to the 4th. Okay, so then we have one last thing to find, which is T. So T is going to be the cross-sectional area of the point we're taking at. So we're trying to find the shear stress at A, and A lies in here still. So the cross-sectional area is just that distance, which is the width, which is zero points, zero two zero meters. All right, so now we have everything. We just have to put it together in an equation. So I'll take a seat. So let's say the shear stress at A is equal to. So first of all, the shear that's converted to just newtons, so 20,000 newtons. Then we have Q, which we found as 6.4. It's 10 to the negative fourth. Then my is 2.50, 10 to the negative fourths, 
and then t is 0 0.020. And you're going to find that shear stress at 8 is equal to 2.56 times 10 to the sig pascals. That's our final answer. So that's how we solve this kind of problem. All right, shear stress is just the same thing kind of as the previous units, but we're adding a couple more steps on. So if you're still having trouble, feel free to check out more videos in my playlist. Uh, check out more problems on Chapter 7, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.